Hi guys, so for today's video we're going to be working on a bit of a cool down, so the kind of video that you would do after your flow, um, working your way in towards some stretches and then coming into your Shavasana. So for today, if you wanted to take a few moments starting off in a nice child's pose, allowing the toes to touch, the knees to fall apart, bringing your hips towards your heels, sinking your chest in between your thighs, melting it towards the mat. Bringing your forehead onto the ground, reaching your fingertips away from your body. As you draw the fingers away from you, you can continue to draw the hips back and down. Finding a nice stretch through the sides of your body. Taking a couple of breaths here. Maybe gently swaying your hips from side to side, massaging that third eye, your Ashna Chakra. And then coming forward into a tabletop position, tucking your toes under, lifting your hips up and back. Finding your downward facing dog. Taking a breath in your downward facing dog. And on your next inhale, reaching the right leg high to the sky. Finding length through the right toes as you exhale. Bring the right hand on the outside of your, sorry, the right foot on the outside of your right hand. Sink the hips down, option to drop the back knee down, release your toes, come into your lizard pose. From here, you can always stay being mindful that you're not resting on that back knee. So if you find that you're all the way up here, can you shift your hips forward and down? Find a bit of lift in the chest area. Option to bring your forearms down to the ground and hold your stretch here. Finding, feeling as though you're drawing the feet towards one another, so similar to Anjanyasana, where you're trying to square the hips off, but then continue to melt the hips down. Getting a nice stretch here. And then coming back up onto the palms of your hands. You're going to heel to that right foot through center. Bring the right hand on the outside of that right foot. And all I want you to do is shift your weight back, coming into Ardha Hanuman, half splits. You might want to wiggle the right heel forward a little bit, just so that you can get that left hip on top of your left knee. And then once it's positioned, you want to energetically feel as if you're drawing that, that heel back, so that you're plugging that femur back into place, squaring off the hips. And as that right hip reaches back, your upper body is reaching forward, trying to get the crown of the head towards your right toes. And find a fold here. On your next inhale, taking your gaze towards your toes, we're going to bend through that right knee, plant your hands, tuck your toes under, lift that knee up, reach the right leg high to the sky. Option here to give your leg a little shake. If you want a bit of a reset, you can always bend that right knee and slowly start to take that right foot back behind you, finding your wild thing. There's always an option in wild thing to find full Urdhva Dhanurasana if you want to come into a back bend. Opening up through the chest, trying to make sure that the toes are pointing more in than out, and then making your way back into your downward facing dog. This time reaching the left leg high, lengthening through the left toes. As you exhale, step that left foot on the outside of your left hand. Lower the right knee down to the ground. Release your back toes. Find that lift in the chest once again, sinking the hips forward and down. Feeling quite a deep stretch in that right hip flexor. Option to stay here. Option to bring the forearms down to the ground. Again, making sure that you're not putting too much weight in that back knee, trying to draw your feet towards one another, squaring off through the hips. Breathing where you are, always working with your breath to deepen your stretches. And then slowly making your way back onto your hands, taking that left hand on the outside of that left foot as you heel to the left foot back through center. All we're going to do here is start to straighten out through that left leg as we shift our hip back. Once again, maybe wiggling the heel forward for a moment just to make sure that that right hip is on top of your right knee. And then energetically drawing that left hip back to square the hips off. As that hip draws back, your chest is melting forward, the crown of the head is reaching towards your left toes. Feeling a nice stretch in the backs, in the back of that left leg. Keep breathing where you are, always finding a bit of lift and length as you inhale. And as you exhale, seeing if you can melt a little bit deeper into your pose. And then on your next inhale, taking the gaze forward, starting to bend through that left knee, planting your hands firmly, tucking the back toes, lifting that back knee up so that you can take that left leg up towards the sky. 
Bend that left knee. Again, option to stay here. Option to take that left foot behind you. Find your wild thing. Always the option there from wild thing to find your full wheel, full urdhva dharmarasana. Always opening up through the heart space, trying not to pinch the lower back. Being mindful of what's going on with the toes. Drawing the inner thighs towards one another. And then finding your way back into your downward facing dog. This time we're going to inhale, reach the right leg high to the sky, lengthen through the right toes. As you exhale, bring that right knee behind your right wrist. Lower your shin down to the ground, make your way into pigeon prep. So things to be mindful of for your pigeon prep. If you are somewhat new to this stretch, it is a lot easier to draw the heel a little bit closer towards the groin. Making sure that that knee is pointing towards the right hand side you want to be squaring off your hips. So if you need to, you can place a block underneath you if you find that you're completely dipping to one side. If you have practiced this a bit more and want to deepen your stretch, you can always take the shin a little bit more parallel towards the front of the mat. Bring your fingertips onto the ground as if you're drawing the fingertips back. You're going to feel how your chest reaches forward. Find that opening in the chest, sinking the hips down, and then melt yourself down over your shin. Now, trying to keep this, so I mean, depending on whether you are more flexible or less flexible, if this is a pose where you don't feel much of anything, can you start working on ways to try to strengthen the stretch so that you feel a bit more, um, a bit more of it, so not just melting fully into what feels comfortable. And if you're not quite as flexible, not feeling like you have to go 100% into the stretch and going maybe too far. So working with your body wherever feels right, breathing into the stretch. It's so important to keep working with your breath even as things slow down, especially as things slow down. So again, finding that bit of lift and length as you inhale, and then allowing that extra release as you exhale. On your next inhale, we're going to slowly start to roll ourselves up. We're going to shift our weight onto our right hip, and we're going to take that left leg around. Now we're going to keep lifting that left leg up. So pointing the toes, grabbing on wherever you can. Maybe it's just down here. Maybe you're coming up a little higher, finding length in the spine. And I want you to slowly start to roll yourself back down onto the ground. Your hand will slide down with you. As you come onto your back, your right leg is going to straighten. Option to take your grip a little higher now that you're on your back, coming into a supine uh, splits variation. So grabbing onto wherever feels right so that you can deepen that stretch, trying to draw that left leg towards you. On your next inhale, lifting your head up, drawing your nose towards your knee, holding here just for three, and for two, and for one, releasing back down onto the ground. We're going to bend that left knee, draw it across the body, find our supine twist. So as you draw that left knee across the body, you might want to shimmy your hips a little bit over towards the left. Making sure both of your shoulders stay connected to the ground. Your gaze is going to go over towards the left-hand side. Option to close your eyes here, just so that you can really bring your awareness within. And if you're holding any tension anywhere, if you're not fully breathing into the pose, can you start to let go, see if you can draw that knee further down while maintaining that shoulder connection to the ground, finding a nice, deep twist and stretch here. And then slowly coming back through center, bringing the hips back through center, reaching the feet up towards the sky. Your hands are going to reach up towards the ceiling as well, and just working through a quick abdominal um, series. I want you to start to lift your fingertips up, see if you can touch your toes, and then make your way back down. Reaching up and tapping and back down for another nine and for eight. And for seven, and for six, for five, try to keep the legs where they are, for four, for three, for two, for one, as you lie down, reach the legs up and back, but just to gain momentum to come forward, we find Paschimottanasana. So, removing any excess flesh from underneath you, drawing the navel in. Hips reaching back as the chest reach, reaches forward. Allow yourself to melt over your legs. 
So again, keep drawing the toes towards you if your hands are on your shins. That's absolutely fine. Just grabbing onto wherever you can. Trying to maintain as much length in the spine as you can as you find that forward fold. Working with your breath once again, finding lift and length with every inhale. Releasing a little deeper with every exhale. And then slowly rolling yourself back up, crossing at the ankles, planting the hands. I'm working through a vinyasa and coming straight back into downward facing dog so that we can come onto the left side. Reaching that left leg high to the sky as you exhale, bring that left knee bum into your left wrist, shin drops down to the ground. Drawing that right leg back, squaring off through your hips. Coming up onto the fingertips as you draw the fingertips back, opening up through the chest and starting to melt your way down onto the mat. Once again, working on either bringing that heel a little bit closer if you're a little less flexible or bringing that shin a little more parallel towards the front of your mat and working with your breath here. So they say that we store a lot of our blocked emotions in our hips. So a pose like pigeon prep can be incredibly powerful. But what tends to happen is that we tense some of our muscles or we hold our breath and we don't fully allow ourselves to release. So in this pose, can you really work on focusing on your breath, trying to release those areas of tension, actually bringing your awareness to those areas of tension and breathing through them, so taking some deep breaths with your focus on those areas of tension. And then on your next inhale, slowly starting to lift yourself up, this time shifting your weight over towards the left hand side, taking that right leg around, keeping that right leg lifted, finding lift in the spine, grabbing onto wherever it might feel right. We are gonna roll down, so starting to round through the back, sliding the hands down as we come onto our back, keeping that right leg lifted, this time the left leg is gonna go long. You can start to take your grip a little bit higher, drawing that right leg in towards you. And then on your next inhale, lifting your head up, drawing your nose towards your knee, holding here just for three. And for two. And one. Releasing back down, bending that left knee, grabbing onto the left knee with your right hand as you draw it across your body. Option to shimmy your hips a little bit over towards the right hand side, your gaze goes over towards the right. Once again, keeping both of your shoulders connected to the ground, working on melting that knee closer towards the ground, finding a nice deep twist, nice stretch here. Taking one more deep breath, and then coming back to your center, hugging both of your knees in towards your chest, allowing yourself an opportunity now to take maybe any inversion of choice, whether you want to come into deeper into priming, which is just taking your feet up towards the sky, maybe placing a block underneath your hips. If you're coming into shoulder stand, starting with plow pose, taking your feet over your overhead. So coming here first, positioning your hands on your lower back, drawing the elbows in towards one another before you reach your feet up towards the ceiling. Now making sure that you absolutely never move your neck in this pose. I find shoulder stand to be a hard one to teach, even to practice myself, because it can be dangerous on the neck. I actually find it to be a bit uncomfortable on my back. As you come out of it, coming back to the cloud pose, planting your hands on the ground and slowly rolling yourself out. If you take a shoulder stand, making sure that you counter it by coming into a fish pose. So coming up onto your forearms, opening up the chest, and releasing your head and neck back behind you. If you're coming into any other inversion, practicing maybe your headstand, making sure that you take a child's pose when you finish. And then coming back onto your back, drawing your knees into your chest, give yourself a very well-deserved squeeze. And then make your way into Shavasana. Uh, your final relaxation pose, maybe putting um, some nice music on and just allowing yourself to light up for a moment to truly let go. Your feet fall apart, um, your legs fall apart, feet fall outwards, arms away from the body, palms facing up. Allow your eyes to gently close. You're no longer taking, uh, you're no longer controlling your body, no longer controlling your breath, and just allowing yourself a few minutes in Shavasana in your final relaxation pose to truly let go and just embrace where you are, embrace being. Um, and that is it for our cool down today, but I'll be bringing you some more videos. So thank you for watching and see you again soon.